Hi, it's Richard Geller, uh, businesscreditmachine.org. We are going to have a teleseminar coming up. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to have five hot seats. If you want to apply for a hot seat, go to businesscreditmachine.org, fill in your information. Um, if you're on my list already, you'll get a link where you can um, fill in a real quick little application. And what we'll do is, if you're on the hot seat, you'll tell us about your business, and we'll help you come up with a uh, 20 or 30 second elevator pitch with something that would appeal to investors or lenders. So you'll get a way of describing your business and help in raising money. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have that tele seminar coming up and if, even if you don't want to be in a hot seat you can ask questions and participate. If you're in a hot seat we're going to interview you and uh, you'll be able to get a lot more in-depth help on presenting your uh, business to a lender or to an investor and how to present it and how to structure your money raising so that you can raise money and build your business. Okay, now I've got a couple of other things here um, that I was going to cover here. Um, okay, dear Mr. Geller, happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you. Received your email and thanks. I appreciate it. I get a lot of people that like the emails and I'm, I'm really glad when you say that you like them. Yes, I do need funding. Okay, I work in the display industry, and my function was to resolve problems with displays. I moved to Florida in 2002 and realized that there is an area uh, of the home that no one decorates during festive occasions, Christmas, Halloween, and Thanksgiving. This is the garage door area. So I've designed a series of panels that can snap on or off the garage doors. These panels create a scene for the festive occasion. They're interchangeable and do not affect the door movement. I'm attaching some files for your info. Homeowners spend a fortune decorating their home during these seasons. I know the economy is bad right now, but I am sure it will get better. For the amount of homes all across the states of Canada, this can be a very profitable venture. Uh, um, okay, I need help. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, it's an invention. You know, it's an invention that you have there, Tyrone. It's a, not necessarily a business. The question is, could it be a business? Um... I don't know. I'm not sure it could be a business. Uh, maybe you could try something like licensing. And with licensing, you put some kind of intellectual property uh, on your invention, like a patent application, which can be a provisional patent. It's very easy to do and doesn't really cost very much. And then you could go shop this among people that might be interested, like, I don't know, um, Maybe the companies that are already in the home decoration industry, like people that put out the Christmas lights and things like that. Maybe uh, some of the companies that Home Depot works with. Um, it's not necessarily something where I would raise money. Uh, I think that what I would probably try to do is um, put some intellectual property protection on, and then I would shop this. And what I would do is I would go and see who the major labels and brands are in this industry. I would make notes of them, and then I would contact the vice president of business development or the president or the CEO, I would say, I have this invention and I want to license it. Are you interested? I would do this as a licensing venture. I think it's a very tough standalone business. And I think that as a licensing venture, it could be very, very good. Licensing is pretty easy to do and doesn't require a lot of capital or any capital, really. Um, okay, well, then the second one comes from Monty. And um, my name is Monty and I'm a Vietnam veteran. I've designed a Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghan veteran clothing and merchandise line. I have four distinctive veteran logos, two Vietnam, one Iraq, Afghan. These would be for veterans, family supporters, etc. Each logo will have their clothing line, tees, tanks, sweats, hoodies, thermals, etc. Uh, wall stickers, video games. Zippo lighters is interested. Multiple revenue streams. The merchandise will be sold by internet at NASCAR events, motorcycle events, and rallies. I'm a biker. And as uh, military base events and wherever. Um, I believe this line of clothing can be bigger than and then he names a bunch of um, major major brands. I am a startup company we need an investor business partner with money or a rich uncle. We can't pick our uncles. <laughs> we all would want a rich uncle. We can't pick our uncles. And um, there's no equity in the house for funding. I work at a full-time job as a buyer for our company. So uh, what do you have in mind? I have no money to spend on do-it-yourself books, tapes, etc. This needs to start now. Well, um, I think you have a really interesting idea, Monty. I'm going to tell you one straight up right here that 
If you're saying you have no money to spend on do-it-yourself books, tapes, etc., you're making a big mistake. Now, I can be accused of being self-serving, and I am, because I sell books and tapes and how to do things, but the best education, uh, the best money I've ever spent has been on education. I spend thousands of dollars constantly on education, thousands, all the time. Now, you might not have thousands, you might have hundreds, or you might have tens, but uh, what you need, in fact, is education. You need knowledge, because with the knowledge, then you have the ability to put into action things that are uh, in, intelligent, smart, that might work. Without that, you know, you're, you don't know what you're doing, and you got to know what you're doing. I come from a family where, you know, my father is a doctor, um, my father-in-law is a doctor, my whole family is highly educated, and um, although I'm a high school dropout myself, but I don't think there's anyone I know that spends more money on education than I do. I have thousands of books in my library. I read uh, books, magazines, newspapers. Uh, I buy continuing education courses. And as I said, I spend thousands of dollars on it constantly. Um, two, three hours a day, every day I spend studying. And I have for a long time. Without that, you really have a very much less chance of being successful, let's put it that way. One of the things that you want to try to do is you want to find people that are successful in what you're already you're trying to do and you want to emulate or copy what they're doing. And the thing is that a lot of people that have been very successful have written books or home study courses and you can buy those books or home study courses and learn what they're doing. And, and that's very important. If you're trying to learn from people who have not made it and are not successful in what you're trying to do, then you're going to have a much lower chance of success. That's just how it is. Um, so that, that I will take issue with. Now, as far as the rest of what you were saying, um, the, uh, I, this is something where what you need to do is you need to start small. What I would do is I would put some of these, uh, this clothing together. Uh, maybe you have somebody you know that can um, you know, help you by putting up, uh, really it wouldn't cost very much, a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. And you can buy some inventory, you know, you can create some designs, get them made into some of those clothing items you mentioned, and then sell them at uh, events on weekends. Swap meets, farmer's markets, um, flea markets, uh, carnivals, community events, um, get-togethers, churches. Um, what you want to do is you want to start selling your merchandise, and you want to have uh, a card or something that explains who you are and what it's all about that goes with the clothing. And you want to really evangelize with your, your cause and what you're doing and who you are and uh, get the message out. Then if you feel that there's a responsive cord, you're going to be making money all along and you're going to start building it up by just doing some sales on weekends. Then what you do is you go to some stores and you show them your merchandise and you show them that you've been making a bunch of sales on weekends and there's real demand for it. And you, you start building up some uh, distribution to retailers locally. Once you do that, if it starts really selling well, then you can go national with this and you can start going to much larger distribution outlets. But that's how I would start. And with the kind of business you're talking about, you don't need a rich uncle, you don't need tens of thousands of dollars, you just need enough to get a small amount of inventory started. Uh, and, and that's about it. And you should be able to at least, you know, maybe it's a thousand dollars or whatever. Uh, if you get, get my, my courses, you'll, you'll learn about how to, how to get credit so that you can get open tr uh, trade credit with vendors so that they can ship your merchandise and open account. They're not going to do that immediately, but you can build up to that pretty quickly. So even if you have terrible personal credit and don't have much money, you can still do this business. It's a fabulous business, the kind of business that you can do without actually having to uh, raise all this money. So I'm going to disagree with you on two points. One of them is on the education, which you really need to get, and, and, if you, and the know-how. And the second point is you should be able to get this business going with little or no capital. So this is Richard Geller. If you're watching this video on somewhere other than my website, visit businesscreditmachine.org. Make sure you put your name and email address in, and you'll be uh, getting my videos and information over email. Uh, and I'll never share your information with anybody else. They can take me and, and um, hang me by my toenails. I still will not give anybody your email address. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.